Uh, yeah, vaccinations proving to be a hotter commodity in Osaka than Tokyo. Uh, yeah, it turns out that we're in to in Osaka, like all the reservations that were available in the mass vac vaccination centers run by the self-defense forces were like out in like 25 minutes. In Tokyo, they're hardly full at all. And if you ask me, uh, in Tokyo, people complain about that the distance to the mass vaccination center is so far that they'll, they'll just do it locally with the local government. There's enough set up so elderly people don't feel the need to get on a train and commute an hour to go to a max vaccina vaccination center in the center of Tokyo. That said, uh, what I see a lot of local governments starting to do is to the extent they have open slots available in reservations, um, a lot of people are now pivoting, first of all, to allowing uh, like emergency workers and school teachers and so on to be able to, to take those free slots to get a, a sort of advanced run. In some prefectures, actually, the government is now uh, moving. I've got a thing in here as well where the central government is actually looking now to authorize. So long as local governments are uh, going to meet their target of vaccinating all of their over 65s by the end of July, um, they will allow extra capacity available now to be given to anybody at the discretion of local governments, uh, including uh, young people or whatnot. So I'm really hoping at some point this will mean that, yeah, if I can go out during the day, I can just be on standby for when there are open reservation slots, at either local or in Otimachi. And I can go get my shots, uh, my, my Pfizer shots. So, um, yeah, again, it's kind of good to see that. Then this should also help accelerate the, the rollout because this is a situation right now. They're using time-based slots. And if they're not full, you know, it's kind of a waste at the moment. The government is trying to rush to get as many people vaccinated as possible. So, yeah, good that they're being flexible. Also really good that municipalities are recognizing things like school teachers, police, fire, you know, first responders and so on. Um, as uh, other you know other groups of people not currently covered in uh, elderly or in danger groups for that Johnson and Johnson uh, vaccine is up for approval so that's a good thing um, Yoyogi Park two big things about this that they've created a public viewing area for the Olympics where the idea is that if even if you can't attend events you can go and watch it on a big screen in a park so you know some space a bit of room for social distancing however the plan is to allow 35,000 people into Yoyogi Park to watch the big screen which is funny because right now the rule for Yogi Park is no parties of more than five people. So, you know, five people or 35,000 people seem to be the rules right now. In order to enable the viewing space, they also said that they were going to substantially trim or prune um, trees around the viewing area. It turned out this was going to be pruning, like cutting off branches of 35 trees out of the 27,000, uh, 20,000 in the park. I honestly don't have a problem. I know I saw some people, including Rochelle Kopp, who started a petition against the pruning of the trees. The pruning of the trees happens anyway. I mean, yes, doing it for a pro Olympic sort of event to enable 35,000 people to come into the park to watch it together and possibly become a huge uh, coronavirus cluster. I have a problem with that. But, you know, uh, the idea of pruning 35 trees in, in a park is big as Yogi Park, and, and they're only cutting off branches, they're not chopping down the trees. Yeah, I, I couldn't get that worked up about that part of it. I get worked up a, not very much, actually, but a little bit more about the idea that they are still planning to do events with 35,000 people anywhere. I mean, that would make sense. If you had people in the stadium and you wanted it as an overflow area, great idea. But the fact that they're still preparing for that when Tokyo is in a state of emergency is still a little, little bit crazy. And much like that, there's a the, the Tokyo prefectural government is looking to set up its own mass vaccination site using that large parking space at what used to be the Tsukiji fish market. However, um, apparently they just realized that, uh, yes, they'll be able to do a bunch of first shots there. But by the time two weeks later, it'll come to give everybody their second shots. Uh, the Olympics will be started by the time they can get this going. Uh, and uh, during the Olympics, that parking lot is going to be the parking depot for all of the taxis and buses used to transport athletes around uh, for the Olympics from the village to the Olympic sites. So it won't be available. So again, this is just another case where the Olympic preparation is interfering directly with uh, plans to uh, vaccinate the population. So yeah, the Tokyo government's trying to figure out they can do max vaccinations, but only of first shots. And so they have to make sure that those people will have, will have access to second shot somewhere else, which is a challenge. Um, do I think that Japan will be open to vaccinated travelers in August? Well, anything can happen, but right now, I doubt it. Uh, I'm hoping, I, I saw there was a news story this week, uh, Red Value, that uh, Only Pony Airways is starting a scheme to check a sort of a digital um, version of a vaccine pass. Um, so, yeah, the, the companies are experimenting with it, and, and who knows, there might be some momentum with it. Remember that the Olympics goes from like late July to, I think, early August, so I, I think it won't be till well after the Olympics is behind us that that will be a possibility. I'm hoping it'll be around the end of the year or early next year. I think August is probably a little soon, but you never know. It could happen. It could happen. People are looking at the technology now.